I have concluded some time ago that when you if that if you want to understand the global macroeconomy, global macroeconomics is not very helpful in achieving that goal. You you better look at financial flows. You better look at other explanations of why something happened. Global macro predicted that the Trump tariffs would lead to an immediate rise in inflation, a collapse in global trade. It didn't happen. Virtually all the predictions turn wrong, and um, so I have I have concluded that the model is wrong. I also think the monetary um, models are, are are wrong in a sense. Not only that they make bad forecasts, but that they actually no longer grasp the essential nature of our economies, which are much more financially dominant. We have fiscal dominance. We have financial dominance. We have innovation of an unprecedented scale. This was not a factor in macroeconomic models until very recently, and and not certainly not in mainstream models. So there is stuff going on at the moment that is sort of outside the framework of of a classic macroeconomist. And I think we need to we need to kind of reassess the importance of the different issues and kind of think again. But that's not a strength of macroeconomists. Well, that's why we're iconoclasts. I was a professor for many many years. I was aghast that we teach students macroeconomics and international trade on the basis of the so-called ISLM model, which assumes, takes it for granted, doesn't prove it. It takes it as a given that investment always equals savings, which is something we should have proved and something we should really worry about because investment often is much lower than savings and in some cases it's greater than savings.